In this lesson, we're going to begin our discussion of ratios, and in the next lesson, we'll look at rates, which is another form of ratios. But to get us started, we've got several ratios listed on the page, uh, 3 to 4, 7 to 9, 149 to 150, and so on. You'll notice that there is the word 2 in between the two numbers. Um, this is one way to write a ratio. Another way to write a ratio is to write it with a colon. So we could say 3 to 4 with the little word 2 in between, or we could say 3 colon 4. Or we could write it as a fraction, 3 to 4. So you could probably guess which one we focus more on in math class, and we're going to focus more on the function notation of a ratio. We can take any ratio and rewrite it as a fraction simply by taking the first number listed and writing it as the numerator and the second number listed would always be the denominator. So again, you can do that with any two numbers that are being set up as a ratio. The last one, a rectangular carpet measures 12 feet by 10 feet. What is the ratio of length to width, of width to length? Um, so which one would you consider for the length to width? Well, for the length, we'll just say L to the width, or the width to the length. Well, when I think width, I think that's the smaller one. So I would say 12 was the length. So I would say 12 to 10 here. And here, I would say 10 to 12. So now we're going to be looking at ratios, but now we're going to be simplifying them. So in the previous examples, we were just rewriting. We didn't simplify. Uh, but now we're going to be treating them as fractions. So we'll rewrite them as fractions, and then we will also treat them as a fraction and simplify. So if I have 12 to 15, how can I simplify that fraction? Well, they both have a 3 in common, so I can divide the numerator by 3, which would give me 4. And I could divide the denominator by 3 as well and get 5. So 12 to 15 is the same thing as 4 to 5. So we can do this with any two numbers. So let's do 24 and 36. So 24 to 36, written as a fraction and then rewrite it, simplifying. Well, 12 can definitely go into both of those. 12 goes into 24 two times, and 12 goes into 36 three times. If you struggle with how to decide what you're going to divide by, you could always go back to something that we learned earlier. And with prime factorizations, so if you take the prime factorization of 12, if you recall, 12 can break down into 4 times 3, and that would be 2 times 2 times 3. And 15 can break down into 3 times 5. Well, notice they both have a 3 in common. That's the only thing they have in common. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put a 3 in the middle. And then if you want to fill in the rest of the circles, then you can say, well, I can throw in two 2's and this one still needs a 5. But what I want to focus on is that 3 that they have in common. Whatever they have in common is what you can divide by. So that's why I chose 3 in my top example. So what if we did that same thing for the 24 and the 36. What would my circles or what would my prime factorizations look like? So let's look at that. So let's say I have 24. And remember, you can break that down anyway. So I'm going to say 3 times 8. You can pick any factor pair. 3's prime. Uh, that could be 4 and 2. And I can break down 4 again into 2 and 2, and then I still have that 2. And then I can break down 36. I'm just going to say 6 and 6. 
and then I know that that's 2 and 3, and 2 and 3. So if I think about my circles, and what do they have in common? Let's see here, we have a 2, so I'm going to put a 2, Oops. and then we have another 2, so another 2 goes in the middle, and I have a 3, so a 3 goes in the middle. And then all of my leftovers can go in the rest of the circle, so we'll say that this circle is a 24, so it still needs a 2, and then this one still needs a 3. Well, what's in the middle there? Two times two times three. Two times two is four times three is twelve. And that's why I divided both the numerator and denominator by twelve. So if you struggle with what to divide by or to divide at all, if you're not even sure if it'll break down, you can always do prime factorizations, draw your circles, and see what's in the middle. Because if they have anything in common, it's going to be in the middle.